This video was recorded at Kickstart Entertainment's Vancouver studio, located on the unceded territory of the Musqueam, Squamish, and Tsleil-Waututh First Nations. We acknowledge that this place, now known as Strathcona, has been home to the Coast Salish people since time immemorial, and that their cultures have shaped and remain an integral part of the community of East Vancouver and Strathcona today. Hello, welcome. My name is Rena Bali. My pronouns are she, her, and I am the Director of Talent Acquisition and Community here at Kickstart. Today we have three of our designers joining us. We have Shay Klassen and Grace Wong, pronouns she, her, who are both designers, and Crystal Wu, <laughs> pronouns she, her, who's a lead character designer. These three have been a big part in creating the design community here at Kickstart, and we're very grateful for that. And just to start off, can each of you tell us a little bit about your journey so far in the animation industry? Okay, so my journey. <coughs> so I've been at Kickstart for about a year and a half. It's my first job. Uh, I was hired as a color key artist for a previous production, and now I am a background and prop designer. Um, since it's my first job, I realize there's a lot to learn. Uh, in this journey and with Crystal and Shay being one of my great mentors, I think <laughs> it's it makes me realize I really need to slow myself down and really take everything in, knowing that I'm gonna be in this industry for a long time and uh, hopefully one day I could become a visual development artist. So yeah, that's my goal. Cool. <laughs> yeah. What about you guys? <laughs> um, I can um, so yeah, it came from a graphic design and illustration background, um, just like Crystal actually. We went to the same school, uh, same class, so that's really fun for me. I yeah, hope it's fun no, for you. No, no, <laughs> absolutely. I was so excited when yeah. I thought you were hired here. Totally, yeah. So it's been great working with you and with Grace as well. It's my fifth year in animation, I believe. So I've had a few jobs, um, started as a production painter, went into a color key artist, and then slowly weaseled my way into design. <laughs> um, and I love it so much. It's really, really fun. It's like the most rewarding job I've done in animation so far. So I'm glad we're all doing it together. Yeah. <laughs> You've done everything. <laughs> done everything. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, I that. feel like I have done a lot. Um, love environment the most. I think it's what I'm the most talented at, just naturally, so mm. it's a good fit for me. Um, and yeah, painting is uh, my life. I really enjoy it, and I'm glad to be working at Kickstart. It's a really good studio, so yeah. Yeah, so like you know, like Shay said, we went to the same school, like same programs in class where we did graphic design and illustration. And you know, it wasn't really geared towards animation, even though like I think even in school, mm -hmm. that's both what we wanted to do, even totally. though totally like that's what's somehow not somehow we didn't go to animation <laughs> school. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> and it was like really serendipitous for us because um, in our third year, our illustration teacher, a new illustration teacher, was hired, and she's an art director in animation. And so in fourth year, um, we had practicums, and she kind of helped. Um, get placements for some of the illustration students mm -hmm. in animation and that was my introduction to animation and my introduction to kickstart and <laughs> it was just an am amazing opportunity because of I've been here ever since like my last um, semester of school I've been here and from I, there you know I started as a designer like Grace working on you know props and stuff and I've slowly went and did characters I did environments and I've, for the last few months, I've been in character lead and I am so like, it's just so rewarding and mm -hmm. like so exciting to be in like a new position. And like, yeah, that's just kind of where I'm at right yeah. now. And I feel like there's, you know, despite being here for years, being moving into this position, like there's still so much further and like so much more to do. And it's just a really, fun career like totally yeah yeah you learn constantly <laughs> in animation yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah like no grace you were saying like oh you're like you know you're still new and there's so much to learn it's mm -hmm. like i still feel like that four yeah. years yeah. in right yeah, yeah. Exactly. i think it just feels like in the beginning there's a lot to take in and now i'm just trying to really again like i said earlier slow down and just like okay calm down everybody's going through this we're not alone mm -hmm. i'm okay yeah exactly. yeah 100 percent okay yeah, yeah everyone feels like they need to learn more mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. it's such a good industry to learn like you literally get paid to like go to school yeah, <laughs> exactly. I'm like, learning yeah. every day yeah right yeah, yeah. You're right. and yeah, that it's great. basically never stops right yeah <laughs> yeah no it. it's great well thank you so much for sharing all your journeys <laughs> it's interesting to always hear about everyone's backstory on how did you get into animation and more specifically design 
But one thing to talk about now is the industry is evolving. We're becoming more and more hybrid, maybe even more and more remote as we grow. So Crystal, since you've been here the longest, you've probably seen how the dynamics have changed of being in studio and seeing your fellow designers all the time, or even you were working remote during that time when it must have been a bit more isolating mm -hmm. to work remote when everyone else was in studio. And now here at Kickstart, you've spearheaded the design committee. So what started the interest or what motivated you? Yeah, so I feel like I've, you know, four years may seem like a long time. Sometimes it may seem really short, but I feel like in that time, I've really experienced a lot of different dynamics, even in this one studio, because when I started as an intern, I was in the studio full time, like every day, nine to five type of thing. And it was, and I really enjoyed that time as an intern because it was my first job. Mm -hmm. It was my first experience in the industry. And being in the studio was so helpful because I got to not just, you know, meet everyone. When I had downtime between my own work, I was able to just go to everyone's desk and be like, hey, like, what are you working on? Like, what is your role here? And everyone was so open and so welcoming and so nurturing in a way that everyone wanted to show me what they were doing mm -hmm. and the work they were doing. And that was just an amazing introduction to the industry and to the studio. And then from there, I was hired full time. And at the time, Kickstart, the studio space was much smaller. So we didn't have enough workstations for everyone. So I was one of the few people of the studio who worked hybrid part time at home and part time in the studio. And it was it was really strange going from that place where being brand new in the studio full time, everyone was so welcoming and everyone wanted to, sh to show me everything that it was, they were doing. And it wasn't like people weren't welcoming anymore, but it got to the point where people, I sometimes it felt like people kind of forgot I was on the team, <laughs> like yeah. not in a, um, like it's- Not it's on purpose. <laughs> exactly. But, like, it just It's happens. just that, yeah, yeah, like, you know, so I would have, you know, team meetings and I wouldn't be invited to them because people would just forget that I was in studio that day, unfortunately. And it wasn't like, um, obviously no one was doing it on purpose. And when pe the art director realized this mistake that, oh, you know, Crystal's actually in studio on Wednesdays, we better have her in the dailies, right? <laughs> <laughs> and so it, it got better with communication, but it was so interesting seeing that, ex like, getting that perspective going into lockdown during the pandemic where everyone was remote and then suddenly, oh, there is an evil, there, we're back to an even playing field. Like mm. we're not all in the studio anymore. Now we're all at home. So it's like, no, no one's getting forgotten in meetings. Exactly, mm -hmm. it was equalized again. And now that we're going into the back into flex, it's like I can see how that experience of everyone being remote is now being worked into flex and how people are getting the opportunity to work what make how they feel comfortable and to work together with like everyone essentially people are realizing okay people work different ways and now we have a model on how we can communicate and have everyone comfortable working at home or working mm -hmm. in the studio essentially yeah and, and also like because of the pandemic it forced everyone to have the better habits of how to work remotely, how to use, we use Slack at Kickstart mm -hmm. to use the communication channels and it taught production how to work with artists that are remote exactly. that now as we evolve into hybrid and what we call at Kickstart flex work, this is, it, everyone already got trained on it indirectly <laughs> yeah. and, mm -hmm. and hopefully people will be left out less. And I think your design committee is definitely going to help yeah. with that. And going back to that, I think part of why the design c committee came up is because of during the pandemic, you know, I had a review with, you know, head of people we were talking about, you know, what was working and what wasn't working. And one of the big things was communication that, you know, even though we were kind of on that level playing field of, you know, everyone's involved in meetings and on Zoom, there was still that isolation and disconnect where there was no more water cooler talk, there was no more lunches, there was no mm -hmm. more just getting to know everyone around you. So I realized people were becoming more isolated and afraid to speak yeah. up outside of just, <laughs> 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 outside of just like the meetings, like it was just radio silence outside of meetings. And so 
there was that conversation with head of peoples, like we need to fill that gap now. And how do we do that? And that's how we kind of came up with the idea of having a design committee. Mm. Yeah, and it's been really great to watch something organically evolve from from you, like you bringing that up. And it's not a top down sort of like management mm. saying, you shall have a design committee yeah, sort of sort of atmosphere. We it's just something that organically grew through our through our core values, yeah. which it's really nice to see that evolve. And mm -hmm. Shay, you're still fairly new to Kickstart too. Mm -hmm. So what was your interest in joining this design committee and helping Crystal create this? Yeah, honestly, it, at first, I didn't really know what she was saying when she said design <laughs> committee, <laughs> but she was like, we're going to like meet with other people and that'll be fun and la la. And I was like, great. Like I was, I'm looking forward to meeting people in the studio. It's really hard at mm -hmm. home, um, especially yeah when you're onboarded fully on Slack or on Google Meet or whatever, it can be difficult. You have like a quick connection for 20 minutes and then it's like, oh, I don't really want to bother them over mm -hmm. Slack or I don't know, do they even remember me? Like was mm -hmm. that, you know, it just doesn't feel the same as in person. So at first when she brought it up, I was like, oh yeah, I'll just meet people and I'll figure out what this thing is <laughs> <laughs> after. Um, and essentially, like that is a part of what design community is. Mm -hmm. Like we're just connecting designers together so that we can all feel supported and encouraged in our work. Um, so it ended up aligning with why I wanted to join. Um, and also it's, yeah, creating like a path of communication for production and for other people in studio to understand where we're coming from, what we're feeling, and mm -hmm. if we can create solutions for problems or if we can encourage people in a direction that we're like doing things well like it's just a way to like encourage communication between all the different facets of a project mm -hmm. yeah. and I think like one of the reasons why like I asked if you were interested because I thought like hey Shay is newer to kickstart yeah. I've never been in another studio like I already know that we get along like let's bring that together and get your experience of like what other studios have been like totally. and like what we can bring to kickstart yeah yeah well like even just the fact that you reached out like fully different from some other studio <laughs> experience I've had so yeah it, I mean it was really really nice to have mm -hmm. you bring me aboard as yeah like a first kind of connection on the project I was like oh thank god it's crystal <laughs> <laughs> and you felt seen yeah, yeah, yeah. I felt it's seen like and safe and yeah just, yeah you're a really nice comforting person so oh thank yeah. you <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that makes yeah, totally. So yeah. I think if anyone's going to lead the committee, I think you're a perfect fit. For oh, it. thank you so much. That, 100%. That's really great to yeah. hear. 100%. Yeah. And Grace, when you started here at Kickstart, we were still in the thick of the pandemic. <laughs> it was right like full on lockdown, onboarding, mm -hmm. no real opportunities to come in in person and meet the team. So if you're open to sharing a bit of that experience and and what motivated you to be a part of this design committee? Yeah, so when I first joined Kickstart, it was remote and I thought that was the norm. And in a way I had to convince myself that I had to accept it because there's no way I could change the situa situation right now with COVID. Mm -hmm. And so knowing the fact that everybody's at home on their computer doing their thing, I felt less lonely in a way, but also every time we're on Google Meet, meeting someone face to face, it just feels so different. Like there's a barrier, not just physically but like mentally I feel like sometimes I cannot read cues properly because mm -hmm. I'm not seeing the full picture and it ends up you know having you know maybe dud moments where I feel like I'm intervening a conversation or don't know when to intervene or ask questions and mm -hmm. asking questions is a really important aspect for me because there's a lot to learn for me and there are times that I felt like who should I ask is this director here is this director available today um, so there was a lot of that in the beginning as well mm. and over time with hybrid uh, coming in with workflex um, things have started to change a little bit more as we start to come into studio and I felt a lot at ease after meeting everybody in person in the last studio session and just feels like oh my look these people are behaving so different and these are really really nice people <laughs> not to say everybody is no. terrible but yeah. <laughs> like I don't know how to read that mm -hmm. social cue when I was you know, at home staring at everybody yeah. on the screen. Mm -hmm. And so um, for the committee, uh, I think I was talking to Crystal mm -hmm. about an asset or something or communication. And you said to me, oh, that's why we're trying to set up a committee actually mm -hmm. uh, to encourage designers to speak up and, you know, support each other. And I thought, oh, what's that? I'm like, can you tell me more about it, please? Yeah. And that's when I showed interest and I wanted to always like know more about 
than just my position. I want to know how everybody's feeling, especially designers, mm -hmm. and um, everybody's, you know, thoughts on how they could be improved, not just working from home, but in studio as well. Mm -hmm. but yeah, it was through Crystal. <laughs> <laughs> but like at the same time, like I think it was great that you you asked to like learn more about it because like you that like just like shows initiative where you were not just gonna sit back and be like <laughs> oh like this here's this design committee thing happening like I wonder what that is like I'll just wait to see how it rolls, rolls out, out right yeah, yeah. like you actually went hey like tell me more about it because yeah. like I want to be a part of this right another yeah. perfect fit <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, I, know, we know, I know like I feel like you know the design community is so new at kickstart but yeah. I feel like we're already working so well and mm -hmm. like our values and what we and like the goals that we have for the committee are like so in line with each other like mm -hmm. yeah yeah it's a good team yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah i think there's a lot of trial and error to be figured out but at the same time it feels so organic mm -hmm. yeah. like, it just already felt so comfortable already after meeting everybody yeah last month yeah, yeah. It's, just, it's natural it it's like to great. create that sense of belonging yes. for artists mm -hmm. it, it needs to occur organically but it also means people have to make themselves maybe feel a bit uncomfortable mm -hmm. and reaching out to their like HR or to their production people whoever can support mm -hmm. them and helping facilitate that and sometimes you don't need that support you can facilitate it on your own by reaching out to the designers you're mm -hmm. working with as well mm -hmm. or even at other studios so I know we've been talking about this design committee a bit uh, Crystal do you want to break down like what is the design committee? Yeah, <laughs> yeah start with like, sure, what is course. it? What does it do? Like, I'm pretty sure yeah. people are wondering. Okay, what is this design committee? <laughs> so, so as you asked before, like, how did it come about? And it was because, you know, I was having some issues on like a previous production where, you know, I felt like I wasn't being heard and I wasn't sure who to talk to. And finally, when I had my review with head of peoples, I was like, you know what? I think this is the time for me to just be like hey, here's what's going on. Here's what I've heard from other designers. Here's why I think people haven't spoken up and kind of just laid it all out. And I think it really um, resonated with me that Kickstart really listened and came back to me. And they were like, okay, we've, we've heard you. Here's... Um, are s here are some solutions like we want to work with you and that's when I kind of realized you know what this is what we need like it's the communication and so when that happened I was like you know what we need to make it clear to everyone at kickstart that we need to have this open communication while also understanding not everyone is going to be comfortable going to you know head of peoples because it's kind of like administration right and so we're like okay how do we bridge that how do we bridge designers of the studio with the studio how do we make sure the studio is really aligning with their core values and how do we make the st um, employees see that so that's kind of how the design committee came about it was you know a place for the designers to really come together and be able to s voice um, their concerns to support each other to and not just with each other but like one of the goals is to you know if people are having issues and they s bring it up during design committee you know us as chairs can then be like, okay, what do you want to see done? Like, let's actually make an action plan and that's actually make the studio a better place for everyone to work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, it, it needs to be a team effort from everyone. Exactly. For sure. Everyone mm -hmm. to make it happen and it also gives all of you the opportunity to be mentors, mentees and allow you to help others. Like, I think about Grace a lot. Like, you feel like you're they're <laughs> your mentors, but I'm pretty sure pretty soon you're going to be helping and mentoring people on the design <laughs> community. Absolutely. Sometimes 100%. it doesn't matter how many years. Yeah. I feel like people mm -hmm. have this assumption that you need X amount of years mm -hmm. to be a mentor, but I think being chairs of such a committee, you're already being mentors to the rest of the designers and artists at Kickstart. So kudos oh. to that. <laughs> <laughs> no, kudos you. to that. Absolutely. I completely agree with that because like, you know, you may see us as like mentors in the you know, designer world, like yes. as designers, but like I think you're already being a mentor as being a chair of the design committee because you're already, you know, role being like a role model to other designers saying totally. like, hey, it's okay to we, talk like, about this. Like, you can, you other people can also take initiative yeah. to, mm -hmm. you know, head and lead 
a committee and a community like this at their own studios, right? Yeah, oh, that's the one thing I want to push to within our studio because I know we have a few new designers and I, I was behaving exactly like that when I got hired and I can totally understand that feeling of I don't know when is the right time to say this or should I ask this question mm -hmm. and who do I reach out to? And so I just wanted to make that very clear in our next committee meeting that it's okay to say it and if this is too stressful to say it in front of us or you know 17 18 people you can come to one of us directly and say hey like i, I got this issue going on could you help me out and we'll be there to support that mm -hmm. you know that being said what's something each of you would say wish you could say to your younger self when you were for i know for grace will be a little bit sooner <laughs> but like what's something that you would tell your younger self now now that you have that hindsight that you wish you had known then that you would like to share with others who are maybe new or, you know, struggling in, in their roles and trying to figure things out because it is a very overwhelming department. There's totally. so much to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think uh, what comes to mind for me is a conversation that we all had actually recently about just like prioritize longevity in this industry. It is a very hard industry if you're giving it your all every single day and then you keep getting notes and you keep getting cut, what feels like being cut down um, on your own ideas and it can be very, very stressful. So I think if you think, I wanna be in this industry for a long time, I'm gonna give it my best today and that could be like 70, 80%. I'm in it for the long haul here. I'm not going to burn out in 20 days, <laughs> in <laughs> two years, whatever, because it can be a lot. So just, yeah, making sure that you're prioritizing um, what you need to to be able to keep going in in the industry is uh, important. Um, yeah, and for your mental health as well. Just That's what I'm do, your right best. Now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. do your best. Yeah, do your best. And <laughs> it's okay. We all feel like we mess up sometimes or we all feel like we are not hitting the mark but mm -hmm. you know it's it's what it is it's a learning opportunity it's a learning experience and we've all been there mm -hmm. uh, we still are there yeah. all the time <laughs> like like um but I think you just get a little mentally stronger too in the yeah. industry you're just like you know what I've done this before mm -hmm. I've had iteration after iteration before I'm gonna get through it you know we can do setting it setting boundaries <laughs> exactly yeah. and yeah. just learning not to take those notes personally, personally yeah. exactly. It's just a part of the industry. It's a part of the job, yeah. and you just learn that with experience. But like early on, you just feel like, oh, like is it me? Like yeah. is it me? Yeah. What am I doing wrong? Like, am I good enough to be here? And I think that's something that everyone in this industry feels when we're new. And I think like that's what something that I would say to my younger oh, self. Yeah. It's just like yeah. just take a step back and just realize like that, that is how everyone feels like it's mm -hmm. not just how everyone feels in the beginning <laughs> it's how everyone feels even years later and you just have those days and you just have to realize y you just need to take a step back and it'll be fine classic mm -hmm. case of imposter syndrome <laughs> yeah we all have it it's i have it sometimes i'm like uh, <laughs> yeah am i really doing this role? like <laughs> yeah. You know, it's that self-doubt and i think that self-doubt it it's a lot more prevalent in in women and in underrepresented groups like we tend to be harder on ourselves mm -hmm. and I think for me, like the younger version of myself, I would say, don't be so hard on yourself mm -hmm. and speak out. Like it's nice to see Grace speaking out. Like sometimes people are scared when they first start and not being open for what they need. I think in today's industry, whether you're a designer or it doesn't matter what your role is, if you're not able to communicate what you need, you have no idea if your production or your studio can support you mm -hmm. because no one's mind readers we can't if everyone is hybrid or you're behind you're at co you're at home we have no way of reading your temperament yeah. or you know when yeah. someone's stressed yeah. out mm -hmm. by the by the coffee machine you know that that <laughs> person's stressed out yeah but when you're stressed at home no one has a way we don't have cameras look like we're, not, <laughs> we're not spying on everyone to see yeah. what you're looking like i think that's going to be a big thing to see how artists evolve in this mm -hmm. i think there's going to be a learning curve mm -hmm. and i think with this committee it's it's quite the right step towards getting getting towards that. And I know we kind of touched on this on when we were just talking about um, in the last question, but self-care. Mm -hmm. This is a this is an industry filled with a lot of burnout. There is a lot of pressure for deadlines. What do you do for self-care? How do you take care of yourself during those times? And it's okay to say I'm still learning and figuring it out. I think we always will be learning. Yeah. Yeah. But is there something that you do to make sure that you're not burning out really fast? Yeah, um, so I think open communication is a big part of that because of when I first started, like, I just felt pressure, like, 
getting assignments and being like, this is your deadline. And like, mm -hmm. it would just be like, oh, like, that's my deadline. Yeah. Like, I just got to do it, right? Movable deadline. Ex exactly. <laughs> yeah. And now it's just, you know, part of the self-care and part of not burning out in, in, in this industry is just communicating that. Like, just being, just saying like, like, I feel overwhelmed. Like, I feel like th this is too much pressure. Like, I feel this, this is too much work. I feel like, you know, this is maybe a new position. This is maybe a new thing I've never worked on. Like, I just need more time. And maybe that doesn't sound like self-care, but it really is. Like, mm -hmm. it just takes off so much pressure that you have when you're working. If you know that, you know, people are flexible. If you just communicate your needs, people are going to be flexible. Like, the, like, the project is never going to crash and burn because one person needed a little bit more time mm -hmm. on one assignment, right? Definitely. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's really good advice. Yeah. I do, like, s uh, definitely something similar. Like, I'll reach out and be like, hey, like, I need this mo moved or I need mm -hmm. to just, like, take a minute. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, like, if it's just me and I think, you know what, like, I can get back to this in 15, 20 minutes, I'll, like, take 15, 20 minutes and just, mm -hmm. like, do something else. I'll, like, play guitar or, like... Mm -hmm watch a little play thing on cat. YouTube yeah. or, yeah. Yeah. or whatever, just like fully <laughs> get away from it. And I always come back feeling so much better. Um, if it's like a little thing like that, if it's like a repetitive thing, mm -hmm. definitely I would talk to my producer or um, whoever is handling scheduling and be like, you know what, I just need to push some of these. And, mm -hmm. and everyone's been very understanding, especially at Kickstart. So yeah, mm -hmm. just mm -hmm. like you said, open communication and yeah. taking breaks. Yeah. <laughs> I agree. Yeah. And I'm still in the process of learning that too, especially with setting boundaries, because with working from home, all I see are deadlines on the page. And it's like, okay, I can totally move this. But I don't know what they're thinking on the other end of the production. So I always need to remind myself that I have to communicate, even though sometimes it feels like it's unrealistic, but I have to remind them like, okay, this is, I will get this done by next week, but I just need this time off right now. Mm -hmm. Maybe 15 minutes even. Yeah. Yeah. Just getting that stress off because I, I didn't, you know, I never see them in person and whatnot. And I just feel like, okay, I just really wanted to get this done, but I, I couldn't, not now, mm -hmm. uh, I will. Um, so that's the one of the processes that I'm still learning uh, how to reach out to people. Um, in terms of self care, I don't know. I'll play with my hamsters. Honestly, <laughs> you know, I, I love to bake, and so yeah, I'll yeah. do that for sure. And mm -hmm. you know, even if it's just like half an hour of making cookies, I would totally do that, and then yeah. come back on my work. Exactly. Um, yeah. Or like just like going outside, like when it's nice out, just like literally just like taking it's a break to like have your coffee or tea like outside, and then it just refreshes you before yeah. you sit back down yeah. to like look at something <laughs> totally mm -hmm. yeah. i do remember being like on my first production and being just like so overwhelmed by the deadlines just being like mm -hmm. i have to hit these or i will get fired <laughs> and like <laughs> yeah. it's a horrible thing to think so like and it's not true like yeah. you i mean yeah like there's a part of like i learned how to be quick in in my right. first few years right. of being a designer so it's like a skill i have like learned but it was very stressful <laughs> so mm -hmm. like if you can do that in some sort of like in a building block way instead mm -hmm. of like all at once yeah. and then like fully burn out and have to take a time off and all that kind of stuff like yeah try just balancing little it. things yeah balancing it out but yeah. I definitely remember feeling that way mm -hmm. I think that's one thing with new designers too because we all started working from home like from you know, pandemic onwards. And I think coming into studio, seeing how other people work can definitely help build that um, confidence. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, people will be there basically to help you and not just, you know, staying at home and, you know, wondering where's this person? Can I ask this person a question? Are they busy? They're there in the studio. And if you're there physically, then it, I think the interaction would just be a lot easier and more straightforward for designers to say, hey, I need help on this. Can you sure. help mm -hmm. me? For sure. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's, um, as this industry evolves, I think something that we have to be really mindful of as like studios, as management, and even as like designers who are more senior, we have a new set of designers that have come in that also did part of their school remotely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And they've yeah. been a little, it's like, it's like you kind of yeah. get out of touch. Like when, yeah. you know, when, yeah. when everything yeah. first opened back up, mm -hmm. it was a little bit, for some people it was just fine, but for some yeah. people it was like, do, do, what, do I wear it with wow. this? Yeah. What do I do? Yeah. What's, can I hug someone? Do I someone? trust it? <laughs> I think we all have to be a little patient with each mm -hmm. other because yeah. everyone's speed at, like their comfort levels is going to take some time. And I think that the design community that's being built here at Kickstart through this committee, I think that's like a really good step towards mm -hmm. that. Like that's my 
that's what I see out of this as someone from in my role. But talking about that, like, what are some things that you hope to see for in this committee, like, moving forward? Like, do you have any goals for it? Or is there something you aspire this committee to be like? Um, yeah, so I know that part of the beginning of this committee was just giving designers a safe space. That was kind of the big thing, giving designers a safe space to be able to talk through issues that they, you know, they may not feel safe speaking about otherwise. But, you know, as we got the community together and like during the first meeting, you know, one of the things I said was like, you know, you know what, let's make this committee what we want it to be. Like what designers want to get out of this is what it's going to be. And I feel like even in that short time of having that one meeting, like it's already kind of evolved into, like you're saying, it's m turning into more of just like a community, like mm -hmm. where we're just learning more about each other on a personal level. And I think that with that, comes understanding people better and like and it works in the workplace like you were saying how like people going at their own pace like people have different communication styles and you kind of learn that quicker and better the more you get to know the people on a personal level yeah and i think that's really what this committee is becoming yeah it's all interwoven mm -hmm. it's like yeah you gotta like get a comfortable space going and how mm -hmm. do you do that you like have chats and you like make yeah. it comfortable and you make it fun and and light-hearted and and then when people feel comfortable then they can come to us and be like you know what I am struggling here mm -hmm. or it's really good to hear you guys talk about your struggles like I'm also feeling that mm -hmm. way I think um yeah it works part and parcel it's the same yeah 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 for sure like that my hopes is to see it evolve into something uh, where every designer in the team would be a lot more confident in speaking up for themselves. That's my hope. Mm -hmm. And to still be there for each other. Yeah. And um, like the three of us, we're responsible for just, you know, making sure that designers feel safe in the community. And if they don't feel comfortable speaking up in public, like in, you know, in front of the group, then they can come to us privately and talk about it and we'll solve it together. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Like th I hope that's uh, a habit that we can continue and something that we can aspire to reach out like beyond our company mm -hmm. and hopefully that's something we can yeah um you know spread to the rest of the animation industry as yeah. well every studio has a different work culture and so not everyone has that um easy transition into opening up and not everybody's comfortable with pouring mm -hmm. or word vomit out immediately right <laughs> and so um finding ways to ease them into the process and say, hey, this is okay. Like, you can tell us about this is a mm -hmm. good start. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, I was just gonna say, like, I think one of the things too is you were saying how, you know, we want this to grow beyond just Kickstarter because, you know, we're it's, it's a contract-based um, industry. Yeah. You know, people move around so much. You move, you meet so many different people. You run into people, like, mm -hmm. again, years later, and I think what would be really great is if this could move beyond Kickstarter. Like if we can instill like this atmosphere in the design committee here, like I hope people, once they leave Kickstarter, they will bring that yeah. with them, right? Yeah, totally. And like, I think one of the things too is just like, I think part of it is, you know, supporting people in like personal growth, not just growth at work and like personal work and like personal hobbies and interests. Mm -hmm. I think we're already getting some of that in the design committee. Exactly. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's really inspiring to hear your stories. Like, I think between all the conversations we've had so far, you can really see that you've all had your see it, be it moment. And now you're going to have the, people are gonna have their see it, be it moments through you as chairs of this committee. Mm -hmm. And so that's mm -hmm. really, it's really nice to see. And and that being said, to, to kind of like end off our conversation, is there any sort of like tips or anything that you would like to give other designers and how to maybe create a committee or if they can't what else they could do in lieu of mm -hmm. like a formal committee because it's all about creating that connection point with others mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah I think I would say just like find the crystal <laughs> <laughs> oh <laughs> in my your God. studio you guys are giving me way <laughs> no, <laughs> I mean I think if you can't have something formal I think it is just like it starts with like one or two people it's just like coming mm -hmm. together and being like, I feel this way, like, how are you feeling? Just like being open and honest about your experience can be so helpful. Mm -hmm. I think that's what my see it be it moment was in, in my first job as well. Like just the person next to me was very open. Yeah, he taught me how to use Photoshop properly. And like, he literally <laughs> showed me everything about uh, the industry just by like being a friend. And it just comes out organically and naturally. So 
I guess my advice would be make friends. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say start yeah, off yeah. as making friends. Like yeah. not don't even think about the goal of this or the purpose of this conversation. Just understand and get to know that mm -hmm. other person, yeah. artist or director, supervisor, whatnot. Mm -hmm. And then you can start getting into yeah. like, the details of like, are you doing okay? How are you? And then expand from there. Mm -hmm. Totally. Yeah. 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 Like I feel like I'm getting too much credit for <laughs> starting this design committee <laughs> because honestly, you know, part of it started when I was talking to other designers on my other project, mm -hmm. going like, "Hey, are you all feeling this way too?" Because I yeah. thought I was going like crazy yeah, on that yeah, project because yeah. it was I was struggling so much with it that yeah. I just had to reach out to other designers and be like are you all feeling yeah. this way too? Yeah. And everyone was too. And I realized, okay, it's not just me. But then there was that, okay, well, what do we do? do we? And who do we go yeah. to? And finally it was just like, okay, something needs to be said. And thankfully Kickstart was so receptive to that. But I think that, you know, if you're at a studio where maybe creating something formal um, isn't on the table, it's like, it doesn't need to be formal. Mm -hmm. Like just Can reaching out to people and just yeah. like connecting like that, I think, is also enough because mm -hmm. if you can create that community with like within yourselves and your group it's like do you really need the studio to yeah. be there to be like hey like yeah. here's your official committee like <laughs> how's it going right yeah, and so that that's really much true like i know we have a core value of growing as a team mm -hmm. and this kind of evolves out of that but we also have the core value that all voices matter and mm -hmm. even if that's not our core value of where you work the I think the importance of raising your voice, I think sometimes p people underestimate it. You were vulnerable and you let people know, hey, I'm feeling this way. I think sometimes we struggle in sharing that because we think that that's going to show that I'm less no. of a person. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm not good at my job because I'm saying that. But if you're just saying that to a fellow colleague, that can go a long way. Mm -hmm. and, and look what this created. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And yeah. at the end of the day, it's for the betterment of the project and for the studio. So absolutely, I think, yeah. Like everyone should be feeling good about design committees and, and having their yeah. their designers connect because yeah, it just makes the project better in, in the mm -hmm. long run. Yeah. Like I think since the design committee, like I feel like designers are just way more open to yeah. just even being like, hey, what do you guys think about this thing I'm working on? Yeah. Like I don't know what to do about this color, and you know, it's just you know, it's bettering. Exactly, like everyone mm -hmm. feels so much better on the project. It feels so much less um, stressful, like yeah. tense and all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah it totally. Just creates the space to reach Exactly. Out. Yeah. Yeah, I think as the industry evolves to being more hybrid, these sort of points and these sort of conversations are are really important because we need to create communities that are hybrid now because mm -hmm. we're not always all going to be in at the same time. But how do we give everyone the same experience, whether they're working fully remote, fully in studio or hybrid and creating these committees where people or even channels where people can come and talk and support each other and you get to know what's going on on other shows and you're not mm -hmm. just stuck on this one prop design forever and ever. You're seeing <laughs> what other people are doing yeah. and, and sometimes just being able to see that bigger picture. Yeah is helpful because you're like, okay, this this role is going to end soon and I'm going to try to aspire yeah. to be like that. I, I, mm -hmm. I think what all the three of you doing as chairs is really great work and we're really grateful to have that here at Kickstart. And I want to thank you all for taking the time and having this conversation and opening up about your experiences. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs>